So this question does involve some understanding of pure definitions, right? We have frequency tables, so we need to know what those are. Uh, the left side is the values, and then the number of times that value appears in our data set is on the right side, where it says frequency. Um, we also need to know what a mean is, right? That's the average. Now, some of you are going to be a little too robotic here and just start diving in and trying to find the average of each of these answer choices. And when you do that, you have to take the frequencies into account. So it's not just you can do, you can't just do 70 plus 80 plus 90 plus 100 and then divide by four because there aren't four numbers in these data sets. There are, um, I guess we can add them up and see, looks like there are maybe 24. Um, oops, some of them have more. Never mind. Yeah. So um, I think what they want us to do here is not to calculate the mean, but to understand some patterns. Right, so if we want the greatest mean, we want this set to be lopsided with bigger numbers that happen more frequently. So look at A. What this is telling us is that the number 70 appears in this data set four times. And the number 100 appears seven times, right? So it's kind of going up as we go down the, the list. So what that means is there are almost twice as many 100s as there are 70s. So when we're doing all that addition, right, the, the average formula is the sum of the numbers over the number of numbers. So if we did that for this, to be really specific, we would need to take the number 70 and multiply it by four because there are four of them in here. Um, we would also need to multiply the number 80 by five, the number 90 by six, and the number 100, like I said, by seven. And then we're dividing that by the total frequency. So four plus five plus six plus seven. So it's, it's a lot of math. But I think what we're supposed to recognize here is that overall, this set is top heavy. The, the bigger numbers are overrepresented. So without having to calculate the mean, I know the mean is gonna be somewhere greater than 80. Let's say the mean is here. This is an estimate. And I know that because those hundreds are gonna pull the average up. Think about these as test grades, right? If you had way more hundreds in a class than you had 70s, your average would be good. And so it's, it's pulling it up. Compare that to, num to B, where everything's even, right? So yeah, you've got six 70s and six 100s, but they kind of cancel each other out. So in this one, without even doing any calculations, I know the mean is exactly at 85 right between 80 and 90 because this set is just evenly distributed. So all those 70s get canceled out by all the 100s. All the 80s and all the 90s are gonna average together to get 85, right square in the middle. So the, right now, A is winning because it, it's not gonna just be as simple as canceling out, right? The four 70s will cancel out four of the 100s in choice A. But then there's still three 100s left to kind of pull that thing up. So I don't know what that mean exactly is, but I know it's greater than that middle point. Let's look at C. Same thing's happening here, right? The, the 770s kind of cancel out the 7 100s. And the 680s and the 690s are going to cancel out. So this one, again, is going to have a mean of exactly 85. I don't need to do the calculation to know that. Then if we look at D, again, there's more weight. Uh, they're giving the, the hundreds more hundreds, and so we might be tempted to pick this because there's more hundreds in D than there are in A. But those hundreds, again, are canceled out by all those 70s. It's not about the number of that big number hundred. It's, it's not about how many there are. It's about whether or not that's been balanced by something on the other end. And so here, again, without calculating, I know that this average is going to be 85. If you want, verify, but it's going to be it's going to be 85. So I don't know what it is, but I know what it's not. And that's the key. Um, it's not 85 for A, so it's gotta be the right answer. This is how a lot of statistics questions work near kind of the ends of both modules where we'd expect harder questions. There, it, it will be possible to calculate these things. Sometimes the median, sometimes the mean, sometimes you know the range actually isn't very hard to calculate, but um, it will be possible and maybe even a little tempting to do it, but Mm, it's not necessarily the best way to go about it because it's a time-consuming process. And it is one where if we just enter one number wrong in the calculator, whether it's something like this or Desmos, it, we have a good chance of making a mistake. And, and so it'll completely throw us off. So I would say it's better to kind of understand conceptually how mean works and what it 
it, what it is, so that way you can kind of just look at it and estimate because that's actually what they want us to do. They want us to understand that mean is, is kind of like a balancing act. And the more weight you put on one side, the more the mean tilts to that side. So only choice A has an imbalance of any kind. It's weighted towards the hundreds. B, C, and D are evenly balanced. So nothing's gonna happen that's special. Hopefully that makes sense. I know that statistics is not something that most people are doing in eighth and ninth grade, so this might not be uh, a topic you're very comfortable with, but luckily it is not one that appears a lot on the SAT. So if you have to kind of skip these questions, you just take your best guess, don't feel bad about it. This is much more an algebra test than it is anything else. So learn algebra and you'll be fine for most of the exam.